welcome back to Hannah's Wonder Books. Today we're going to be reading The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. I hope you enjoy listening to The Little House. The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. Once upon a time, there was a little house way out in the country. She was a pretty little house. She was strong and well-built. The man who built her so well said, The little house shall never be sold for gold or silver. She will live to see our great-great-grandchildren's great-great-grandchildren living in her. The little house was very happy. She sat on the hill and watched the countryside around her. She watched the sun rise in the morning, and she watched the sun set in the evening. Day followed day, each one a little different from the one before, but Little House stayed just the same. In the nights, she watched the moon grow from a thin new moon to a full moon, and back again to a thin old moon. And when there was no moon, she watched the stars, Way off in the distance, she could see the lights of the city. Little House was curious about the city and wondered what it would be like to live there. Time passed quickly for the Little House. She watched the countryside slowly change with the seasons. In the spring, when the days grew longer and the, su and the summer sun warmer, she waited for the first robin to return from the south. She watched the grass turn green, she watched the buds on the trees swell, and the apple trees burst into blossom. She watched the children playing in the brook. In the fall, when the days grew sh shorter and the nights grew colder, she watched the first frost turn the leaves to bright yellow and orange and red. She watched the harvest gathered and the apples picked. She watched the children go back to school. In the winter, when the nights were long and the days were short, and the countryside covered was covered with snow, she watched the children coasting and skating. Year followed year, the apples grew old and new ones were planted. The children grew up and went away to the city, and now at night the lights of the city seemed brighter and closer. One day... The little house was surprised to see a horseless carriage coming down the winding country road. Pretty soon, there were more of them on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon along came some surveyors survey and surveyed a line in front of the little house. Pretty soon along came steam shovel, shovel and dug a road through the little hill covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road and some trunk, trucks with little stones, and some trucks with tar and sand. And finally a steam ro roller came and rolled it all smooth, and the road was done. Now the little house watched the trucks and automobiles going back and forth to the city. Gasoline stations, roadside stands, and small houses followed the new road. Everyone and everything moves much faster now than before. More roads were made. The countryside was divided into lots more houses and bigger houses, apartment houses, and tenement houses. Schools, stores, and garages spread over the land. The crowd around and crowded around the little house. No one wanted to live in her and take care of her anymore. She couldn't be sold for gold or silver, so she just stayed there and watched. Now it was not so quiet and peaceful at night. Now the lights of the city were bright and very close, and the street lights shone all night. This must be living in the city, thought the little house. This must be living in the city, thought the little house, and didn't know whether she liked it or not. She missed the feel of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. Pretty soon, there were trolley cars going back and forth in the front of the little house. 
They went back and forth all day and part of the night. Everyone seemed to be very busy and everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Pretty soon there was an elevated train going back and forth above the little house. The air was filled with dust and smoke and the noise was so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when spring came or summer or fall or winter. It all seemed about the same. Pretty soon, there was a subway going back and forth underneath the little house. She couldn't see it, but she could feel it and hear it. People were moving faster and faster. No one noticed the little house anymore. They hurried by without a glance. Pretty soon, they tore down the apartment houses and tenant houses around the little house and started digging big cellars, one on each side. Steam shovels dug down three stories on one side and four stories on the other side. Pretty soon, they started building up. They built 25 stories on one side, 35 stories on the other side. Now, the little house only saw the sun at noon, and she didn't see the moon or stars at night at all because the lights of the city were too bright. She didn't like living in the city. At night, she used to dream of the country and the field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. The little house was very sad and lonely. Her paint was cracked and dirty. Her windows were broken and her shutters hung crooked. She looked shabby, though she was just as good as a house as ever underneath. Then one morning in spring, Along came the great-great-granddaughter of the man who built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house, but she didn't hurry by. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, This little house looks just like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl. Only that little house was way out in the country on a hill covered with daisies and apple trees growing around. They found out it was the very same house, so they went to the movers to see if the little house could be moved. The movers looked at the little house all over and said, Sure, this house is as good as ever. She was built so well, we could move her anywhere. So they jacked up the little house and put her on wheels. Traffic was held up for hours. They slowly moved her out of the city. As the little house was frightened, at first the little house was frightened. But after she got used to it, she rather liked it. They rolled along the big road, and they rolled along the little roads, until they were way out in the country. When the little house saw the green grass and heard the birds singing, she didn't feel sad anymore. They went along and along, but they couldn't seem to find just the right place. They tried the little house here, and they tried her there. Finally, they saw a little hill in the middle of a field, and apple trees growing around it. There, said the great-great-granddaughter, that's just the place. Yes, it is, said the little house to herself. A cellar was dug on top of the hill, and slowly they moved, in their ho- they moved the house from the road to the hill. The windows and shutters were fixed, and once again they painted her a lovely shade of pink. As the little house settled down on her new foundation, she smiled happily. Once again, she could watch the sun, moon, and stars. Once again, she could watch spring, summer, and fall, and winter come and go. Once again, she was lived in and taken care of. Never again would she be curious about the city. Never again would she want to live there. Stars twinkled above her. A new moon was coming up. It was spring. It was quiet and peaceful in the country. The end. That was The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. This is one of my favorite books. I hope you and I hope you liked listening to it too. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time on Hannah's Wonder Books. Bye friends.